My name is Mackenzie Drebet, and today I wanted to talk to you about a very interesting topic, which is counting calories. This is a very probably debated topic in the world, and it is talked about mainly in the form of weight loss, but we're going to see some of maybe the discrepancies in the conversation. So before we really start, we have to define and understand what is a calorie and how calories are used and formed in the body. So a calorie is a form of energy storage or energy unit. Now our bodies require just for survival and when completely at rest a certain amount of calories just to function, just to stay alive. So that is known as your basal metabolic rate. You can find out an average basal metabolic rate by taking your weight in pounds and timesing it by 10. So if you were 200 pounds times 10, you would need a basic intake of calories per day of 2000 calories to maintain proper body function. That is besides if you are high intensity exercise or doing some sporting activities that require a lot more output of energy from your body. So, we have to keep that in mind because we want our bodies to be functioning properly. We don't want to be starving our bodies because then our brain's not going to function properly, our organs aren't going to function properly, and we're just going to feel bad overall. Now, our brain actually uses a whole fifth or around a fifth of the entire basal metabolic rate of calories. So if your BMR is 2000, then your brain is going to use 400 out of those 2000 calories just for itself. So we need to make sure that we're eating enough proper calories to ensure that our body and our brain is functioning properly. Now a misconception, a little bit because of definition, is that calories in, calories out. And if you're in a surplus of calories, then you're going to gain weight. And if you're in a deficit of calories, you're going to lose weight. But that's not the full story because how the calories are built in the body or utilized, most of the calories are intake or coming into the body by carbohydrates. And then the body takes those and breaks them down into simple sugars and which is glucose. So the glucose, when it's in the body, it first enters into the bloodstream. So when we eat certain foods, those carbohydrates are broken down and then enter the bloodstream as glucose. So when the glucose empties your blood, your pancreas releases insulin, which is actually a hormone, which maybe you didn't know. And that hormone tells the body to take that glucose and to store it. Now your body stores glucose as glycogen. So it takes the glucose and puts it into these many either single strand chains or branched chains as glucose and it's stored in either the liver or in other cells in the bodies like the muscle where it is very readily broken down quickly with certain enzymes as your body needs it. So if you exert yourself then it can take those enzymes and it can quickly multiply across those branch chains and release the glucose as energy for your body to utilize. Those stores in your liver and in your muscles have a limit. You can't exceed that. You can't just keep adding to the glucose stores. So once the glucose stores are filled, if you've eaten so much high glucose containing foods that is filling the blood, then there's an excess of glucose still once the stores are being full. So then your body has to deal with the excess glucose. The first process that your body does is it switches from fat metabolism to glucose metabolism. So then instead of breaking down fat, it turns to the glucose that is in your bloodstream. But if that isn't enough, then what it does is it takes that glucose, changes it into a more long-term storage form, which is fat. So here's where we have a little bit of the discrepancy. So carbs are the main ways that we get glucose. So if you eat a lot of carbs, 
it should be, or you would think, that it would increase your fat levels a lot because you're getting a lot of that glucose, which is causing a lot of insulin spike, which is then being stored as fat. But that's only part of the story because the hormones are triggered only by certain foods. So then if we look at something known as the glycemic index, now the glycemic index tells us how quickly certain foods will put glucose into the bloodstream. And then you can have different foods that are very low and other foods that are higher glycemic index. The only problem with that is that you have to understand there's another part, which is the glycemic load, which takes into consideration amounts of that food and other factors. So you want to make sure that these carbohydrates are complex. That is going to slow the digestion down and slow the release of that glucose into the bloodstream, therefore not spiking the insulin and causing you to store fat. So if we look at the glycemic index, the ranges are low is anywhere under 55. Our mid range is 55 up to 70 and high is 70 and above. But then when it comes to glycemic load, low is 10 and under. Mid range is 11 to 19 and then 20 and above is a high glycemic load. So if we look at different foods, we can look at something like carrots, which have a glycemic index of 47 which is still on the low side, but getting to the medium range. But its glycemic load is only two. So the amount that that's going to actually affect your blood glucose levels and the surge is going to be extremely low. But then if we look at something like a Snickers bar, which is a 55, which is still not very high, but the glycemic load is 30, which is way above the high range of the glycemic load which is gonna cause a huge spike in insulin. So now when we're talking about the glycemic loads and indexes of certain foods, we can see how that actually affects the hormones that is going to affect how that is stored as fat and how readily stored as fat. Because when we're talking calories in versus calories out, most people think that means calories into the mouth, but that's not necessarily accurate it would be calories that are utilized versus calories that are more than what we can utilize. So when we take someone who's eating, let's say, for example, 2000 calories a day, and then they lower those calories to 1500. So they lowered it by 500 calories. Many studies have shown that the body will actually just use less to function. Obviously it's going to function less efficiently, but it will just use less and therefore you won't be losing any weight. You'll stay perfectly the same. Doesn't matter if you lower or raise, it'll, the body's use will fluctuate along with that. Another thing that they found, this was done in human studies and different animal studies, if you lower the calories, so let's say someone's BMR is 2000 and you lower that down to 1500, so that means that they're actually not getting enough calories to even function properly on a daily basis. But the glycemic index or the insulin response, so the hormone being released because of the foods they're eating is causing an insulin response. They will automatically, because of that insulin release, start storing that glucose as fat. So now they're taking, let's say it's 500 of those 1500 calories to fat and now they only have half the amount of calories they need to function. So they're going to feel lethargic, they're going to feel just overall bad and not, they might feel foggy in their brain because their brain's not getting enough energy to use, but they'll still be gaining fat. So lowering the calories, they were still putting on weight because of the hormones that were being released, because of the foods that were being eaten. So from this, we can clearly see that not all carbohydrates are created equal because not all of them are digested the same and not all of them have the same hormonal response. And as something you have to keep in mind is that 
when our BMR is 2000 and our brain is using 400, there's different forms of energy the body can use. So it can burn fat, it can even poorly burn protein, but glucose is the main form the body wants to use. And when we're talking about the brain and the nervous system, they mainly use almost exclusively glucose for their energy sources. And every other cell in the body uses glucose in some extent to burn as its energy source but the brain and nervous system almost exclusively. So you don't want to be restricting those calories and causing certain parts of your body to be starving and not functioning properly. So you want to make sure that you're getting the proper amount of calories in and the proper energy. But you want to select those foods that are not going to be spiking your insulin, that are going to be more complex carbohydrates. So whole grains, whole foods, these things are going to digest slower, the insulin response is going to be less, it's not going to spike, and then you're going to be storing at a proper rate into your liver and into your cells without storing that as fat. Another thing that you can do to slow the digestion of the carbohydrates is to make sure when you're eating a meal that it's properly balanced, that you're having protein, that you're having fats in there. That will slow down the digestion of the carbohydrates and let it have a slower release and then you won't get tired as quickly because you can eat a lot of carbohydrates and in two hours later you're feeling hungry you're feeling low on energy because you had that insulin spike it dropped you used up all your stores because it went too quickly so if you're eating protein and fats with your meals and slowing down the carbohydrate digestion then you're going to make that last over a longer period of time so from all the things that we've seen here, you can see that not all carbs are created equal. Counting calories for losing weight? Maybe not. But maybe to make sure that you're getting enough for your body to function and just being mindful of the kinds of calories that you're eating, that they're healthy, that they're whole, that they're not causing this hormonal imbalance in your body that is causing extra stress on your body. So I hope this information was helpful to you and helped you to understand a little bit more how your body works and how you can make sure that you're eating for the best health of your body. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.